Hello there. Uh, right, a quick video today. I'm just going to be going over a 12 volt solenoid off my lawnmower. Uh, tested it and it seemed to work and then I tested it about 10 times and it was intermittent about one in five times. It wouldn't make contact. So now there's hundreds of videos on these showing you how they work, how to test them, how to replace them. But I haven't got another one and I want to carry on with what I'm doing today. So I thought I'd have a look and see if it's repairable. And I know price-wise they're not expensive. You can get a brand new one for like 10, 15 euros, dollars, similar sort of price. So yeah, in a way you'd be like, oh, it's not worth bothering with. But if you're stuck like me, it's going to be three, four days for delivery. There's nowhere locally I can go and get one in stock. So why not? Like everything, I think I'll have a look, see what I can do. If it's broken, there's nothing to lose. So why not have a try at fixing it? So this is it. I'll just turn the camera around. Hold on. Okay, so here it is. It is a solenoid. Uh, I'm sure if you're looking at this, you already know what it does, but just very, very quickly. Uh, it's a 12 volt solenoid off a lawnmower. You've got a positive coming from the battery to this terminal, either way around, and then one going out, which then goes on to the starter motor or whatever the situation is. And it's normally an open circuit, so that there's no contact between the two. And then when you send a 12 volt signal from the ignition or whatever to this little terminal, it then pushes a plunger up which bridges this contact inside down here. So then you have a uh, closed contact, so it sends the voltage to the start or whatever. And that's it, you take voltage away and it's open circuit again. So yeah, it's grounded through the chassis. Sometimes there's a grounding point, but this one isn't. So yeah, basically there's four rivets in the bottom of it. So again, it'd be very easy to think, oh, I can't do nothing with that. But hey, it takes a couple of seconds to drill out the rivets. That was the last one. Uh, drilled them out poke out the rivets, then it comes apart easily enough. And then, like I say, you know, it might be nothing you can do with it, but if it's worth a look, that goes on there. And so there's the ignition terminal, which gets a 12 volt and sends it to the coil. Uh, this cable was very, very loose and it just snapped off. So I did think at first, great, simple solution, soldered that back on. Had a quick look while I was in here and remove this section and I don't know if you can see this so there basically is the the underneath of the two terminals here it's a very simple way of seeing how it works and as you can see they're blackened and charred and burnt so this is a top of the plunger again charred blackened and what happens is that sits in there and then as the coil is powered it sends this little plunger up, so it pushes that copper plate onto the two copper terminals to complete the circuit, and then you take away the ignition 12 volt and it open, 12 volt closes, it, that's all it does. And typical with anything that's got like switching contacts, they have charred up and burnt. So literally all I've got to do here, I'm gonna take a bit of sandpaper, clean off these contacts, you know, wire brush, whatever you've got to hand, You get the idea, get it back to bare metal. I'm gonna do that better in a minute off camera. Same in there, there's one that's a bit worse than the other one. So I'm gonna get in there with a wire brush, a screwdriver, whatever I need to clean them up. So um, yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so there we go. Much cleaner than what it was. All I've done was got a flat screwdriver in there and just scraped off any of the, the burnt charred bits on the copper poles, that's much better. Uh, done the plunger as well, which is probably equally important, if not more important, as that was all charred up. So I've just put a little bit of uh, electrical contact spray on both surfaces. Not, not much. Yeah. Keep a little bit on there. It'll just help anything building up for a while. And then the plunger goes in there, make sure you've still got a spring on the end. Then you've got your disc. Uh, doesn't matter what way around, but it's easily a marking to show what way around it was. That sits on top. Frame there. There's the little metal hammer which pushes up. And then you've got your extra coil that sits on top of that. So, I'm just very quickly going to solder on this wire here onto that terminal. As I said, that broke off. I'm just going to put a dab of solder on that. And then it will go back together. And all I need to do is put four rivets in that. And I'm 
hoping it's going to be good as new. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to come back to that once I've soldered that and riveted it. I might even put some poor little bolts in if I haven't got the right size rivets. But, yeah, it's easy enough to do. And um, I'll let you know how it goes. Right, so there we go. I soldered back on that little cable from the terminal that's broken in the side. Took two seconds, put it back together nice and clean. And I've just riveted the base back on. So there was one which I drilled a hole accidentally too big when I was drilling out the old rivet. So I've had to use one bigger rivet. But I mean, that is absolutely solid. And uh, hopefully it'll work. I'm pretty confident because there's not much else to go wrong with them. But um, okay, I'm going to take it over the lawnmower now and show you how I'll quickly test it before I put it back in. Right, so I've just brought it back out to the lawnmower I was working on. So uh, at the moment I've just got a uh, battery and everything out here, so it's just easier than bringing it inside. So I'm just going to put the negative of the battery onto the chassis or the ground terminal of the solenoid. And then if you take your positive from the battery, this is not going through the lawnmower or anything, it's just directly off the battery for now to test it. You should hopefully hear that plunging up and down inside. There you go. Seems to be working every time, so. That sounds good to me. Uh, you can test it with continuity as well. Get yourself a multimeter. They're not expensive, they're great for doing so many little jobs. Set it to continuity, so basically tests a closed circuit by beeping. And a bit tricky to do with two hands here, but. At the moment, obviously, the circuit's open, there's no beep. And hopefully, you can hear the beeping. Stop beeping. And there you go. The beeping tells you there's continuity, so it's a closed circuit. So, there you go. Hopefully, we've repaired a solenoid. Now, like I said, is it worth doing when they're like 10, 20 euros each, dollars, whatever they are? Fair enough, if you've got a workshop, you'll probably have one next to you. I didn't. I can now get on with this. It's taken me about 15 minutes to do that in total. And I haven't had to get in the car and drive anywhere, wait for delivery, and it saves the old one going into landfill or being scrapped or recycled partially or whatever. So, hope it helps someone out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.